hello and welcome back to the channel and yeah another review i've got another press car um and i just want to say thanks to everyone who watches because of you i get to play around with things like this and also thanks to gt spirit for allowing me to uh write my nonsense about cars too so let's get right into it what is this here well it is a polo gti a polo gti if you're long-time watchers of the channel, maybe even newer watchers, you'll know that I'm a huge GTI fan, huge Volkswagen fan, so to get a press car from them that has a GTI badge on, very good. Um, and also that I have both owned a Up GTI and several Golf GTIs. Um, and even more so, my fiance has a 68 plate, one of these, on the driveway and has had it since new, so I'm very familiar with the Polo of this generation, this being the facelift, obviously. I was very interested to get into this car try it out see what it's all about yeah it's got some interesting specs and parts of it are not very volkswagen and some of it is very volkswagen um so yeah as usual really i'll do a walk around with the car and then i will give you some specs some interior stuff exterior stuff and then we'll get out on the road and i'll show you how it drives thumbnail nah too cheesy Okay, so yeah, here's the exterior walk around. First things first, I think it looks excellent and even better is the color on this one, uh, the King's, King's Red Premium Metallic. Um, I think this looks fantastic, really deep red. I'm really peed off that I haven't had time to do this in a nicer day because you'd be able to see it better, but yeah, it's a beautiful metallic red. Interestingly though, on the Polo, it's a thousand and fifty pounds, and when I go on the configurator to put this on a Mark 8 Golf GTI, I think it's about eight hundred pounds. So, yeah, there's some economies of scale or something happening there. Um, the five-door Polos were always made in South Africa uh, of this generation, and obviously they stopped doing the three doors entirely, so it's just five doors. So maybe there's something to do with that production line and this colour, and I don't know. Maybe they're just taking the pay. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So. The RRP of the uh, GTI is 29,370, and this one's at 31,845. So yeah, 30 grand is what you're looking at, and that does sound expensive, because it is. However, um, we have to consider the alternatives. There's the outgoing Fiesta ST. Actually, I say outgoing, you can't get one anymore. I don't think they're doing any orders on them because the last one's come off the production line now. Um, I think when I looked, it was around 27 so a few good few grand cheaper than this as per usual really nothing's really changed there the only other sort of things i could think of with the i20n i've already mentioned that's a lot cheaper and perhaps the five door mini cooper s um, around the same price but quite a bit less power speaking of power we've got 207 ps at 4600 to 6000 rpm and the engine in this is the 2 liter tfsi so same that you get in the golf which is pretty cool i thought um because most of the other most of the range is 1 liter turbo i think all of it is now actually um with varying powers in it but it's quite cool that they put the full 2 liter tfsi in this it's obviously a little bit less power than uh, you get in the golf because reasons but uh yeah yeah really cool top speed 149 mile an hour 0 to 62 in six and a half seconds um yeah and it's a 1361 kg unladen so yeah it's 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 not light no car is past well the 90s really um but you know it's got enough power to move that weight around it's got the seven speed DSG, and this is DSG only, it's worth saying. Um, they do not do a manual one, which is a crying shame in my book, but I'm willing to give it, give it a go. Um, I've always been a bit of a critic of the DSG gearbox. Look, there's a reason they're only doing DSG, and I imagine it is a commercial one. People love it, so, you know, I've just got to roll over and accept it. I never bought a manual Polo GTI, so it's difficult for me to complain that they don't do it anymore. Yeah, so what do you get with a GTI over your normal sort of cooking model? I shouldn't say that. They've got a few different lineups, actually, um, on the Polo now. Sorry, if you keep hearing rustling, it's, it's the fact sheet I've got. Well, obviously, you get all the GTI styling cues, so you've got a nice honeycomb grill with the fogs there. Looks quite smart. The red stripe through there. 
the GTI wheels. These are the alternative wheels that look very much like the ones on my uh, Mark 7.5 performance. You've got GTI everywhere. This car is also fitted with the optional black pack, which I believe is a no-cost option. So the mirror, the roof, and these are slightly more tinted, and I think this as well, maybe not. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's a no-cost option. I don't really like it. Um, I'd much rather have more of this colour on show, especially if you're paying a grand for it. So yeah, back to the GTI-ness. It doesn't say Polo anymore. We have GTI on a badge there, so no one's going to mistake it, are they? Uh, your exhaust, a bit of a rear diffuser on there, a bit of a side skirt. Essentially, what you're looking at here is very much in the same vein as the Golf GTI, and that is no bad thing in my book because, as you know, I love the Golf GTI. So, yeah, let's have a look inside it now, shall we, and uh, see how it fares up in there. Right, as you can see, it's full of my crap. I have been using it. Of course I am. I've got a press car. I'm going to use it. I need to find out if it's good. So, GTI seats have to be turned. That's just the law. They're a bit houndstoothy on this car, I noticed. I can't remember if the new Golf GTI is like that as well, but uh, yeah. You also get this big, chunky GTI steering wheel. Not fan of it looks-wise, and these touch buttons. We'll get into that soon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if I like climb into her. So yeah, the facelift version is very similar to the pre-facelift that my other half has, except they've replaced normal buttons with touch again down here. Uh, this is pretty much the same with a few updates and tweaks. This car has an interesting option, which I quite like. No cost to have these in grey. I think it's a much nicer spec. Whoever's specking these cars are Volkswagen. Bravo, by the way, because you're doing a great job. This, 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 this is a very good spec. Uh, in terms of not breaking the bank, but being nice. Uh, yeah, digital cockpit, digital dash. You got your Apple CarPlay, your nav, and all that sort of jazz on there. Um, you obviously get the full WeConnect system, which has got like breakdown cover and not breakdown cover, but you can call for breakdown and help and all this jazz. So yeah, that's that. Uh, that's the DSG knob, as it were. We've got sport manual. D, and then also with this car you get drive modes so you can put it in eco mode as well which I did use on quite a long trip so this car has the driver assistance pack so the driver assistance pack you get the lane change system side assist park assist sensor control steering aid to assist parallel bay parking proactive passenger protection system in cabin in combination with front assist that's 540 quid now as standard though being the GTI, I always say to people when they run a Golf, if you get a GTI, you get more standard, and it's the same on here. So you've got the automatic braking and all that rubbish, but two-zone uh, electronic uh, climate control, heated rear screen, which automatically switches off, electric windows, um, foldable door mirrors, which heat and stuff. Comes with a light and sight pack, um, which gives you some things like uh, automatic dimming, Mirror, rain sensors, coming home lights, etc. Um, these also come with the adaptive cruise control, the radar cruise, which is really good. And I have to say, it works very well in combination with the DSG gearbox. I have to say, it, it does. Um, yeah, and like I say, you've got your in car communication media, Apple CarPlay, blah, 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 blah. Let's let's take it out and I'll talk more about it, its quirks, it's good, it's bad. Traditional key with these bad boys. Foot on the clutch, hang on, you should get a nice little GTI in there. And I need to put fuel in it. Uh, oh yeah, and it comes with a beats order as well, which is, yeah, interesting. I wonder what that man thinks I'm doing. Anyway, <laughs> back into the car. Um, obviously I need to get fuel, so I might do that off camera. So Volkswagen Polos in general are one of the cars that I often recommend to people. Um, that and Golfs obviously. But the thing with these are, they are so good at just being a car. If you don't want anything that big, but it's still spacious and also feels pretty high quality. Um, I always just say get a polo. I've had friends buy polos off my recommendation. Obviously, my missus has had polos pretty much since she passed her test. She used to buy a new one every three years. She hasn't bothered replacing this one because it's been so good. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a high quality feel in here that eclipses the Fiesta ST 
by quite some margin. Um, it also eclipses the i20N, which is another sort of uh, rival to this. And yeah, it absolutely, you know, it feels premium. I know you're paying more, but if you look at where, because of inflation where we are, you're not paying that much because you're paying another 10 grand for the Golf GTI. And this is 10 grand more than the Up GTI, really. A bit more than 10 grand, but you know what I mean. Another car you can't get anyway, but still, this feels like you're definitely getting your money's worth uh, jumping up from the G up to this uh, in terms of quality, the, just the car in general. Uh, but it doesn't feel like you're getting a 10 grand downgrade from a Golf, genuinely. I think this feels absolutely perfectly put together. There's a couple of areas where plastics are a little bit cheaper, but not noticeable day to day. And if you haven't noticed, I'm not shouting in here. I'm on a road now, I'm doing 60 miles an hour, and it is whisper quiet in here. It's one of the things that I love about these cars. I think they're just punching way above their weight in terms of class. Now, <coughs> DSG. For all of the rude things I have to say for it, it's pretty quick. I mean, the engine's quick as well, but the gearbox in this, I don't know if it's newer calibration, GTI calibration, or just the fact it's a newer car, but it feels so much better than my other half's one. Having said that, she's had some issues with it, but yeah, 30,000 miles, a few years old, it started to slip, and it had to go in for a recalibration, blah, blah, blah. Not great, but Again, I'm not a DSG fan, so, you know, maybe I'm just being biased here. Or maybe it was just bad luck that we got a bad one and I just happened to be a massive DSG hater. But, but, as I was saying, this thing, yeah, shifts really well, super smooth. Throw it in manual. And back into D. Now, yes, it is a quick car. 207 PS, I think I said. So a bit more than the Fiesta and uh, about 20 horsepower more than the Mini Cooper S. So that's quite on VW, actually. What VW tend to do is, well, especially with the Golf GTI, it usually has a bit less power than its rivals, but it makes up for it with a decent chassis, stupidly good build quality, everyday usability, reliability, rah, 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 rah. With this, I don't think they could even detune that engine if they wanted to, to less. And what's the point anyway? This is a bigger car these days, a heavier car, the 200 horsepower is good in my book. Also with this, you get the electronic XDS diff, which is like, uh, it grabs an inside brake uh, as you pull into a corner, which kind of gives you the impression of, I don't know, kind of like a limited slip diff. It's more like it just makes the front end turn in more. Uh, it can be a little bit, weird at first my other golf gti had it and it took a little bit to get used to but it's actually pretty good um i don't feel it kicking in as aggressively as i did with my manual car maybe that's a calibration thing again but maybe it's just the differences in the gearbox there comfort wise yeah super good uh i did a trip up to hertfordshire so it was about two and a bit hours each way for a wedding came back the next day feeling quite tired um and it was bliss really i you know had some pretty bad traffic on the m25 i just put the radar cruise on and it was just doing most work for me it did 46 47 mile per gallon i think and i wasn't trying to you know hypermile it so yeah it's very good at being a car as i said but what's it like at being a GTI? Well, I've already said it's got quite good power. Obviously, being a GTI, it has the lowered suspension, bigger brakes, more power, fuck off, start, stop. It doesn't actually feel as quick as I thought compared to my other halves, which has supposedly got like half the power, maybe even less, but who knows? Those one little turbos do punch above their weight. I'm gonna put some fuel in it and then I'll get on a good road and see what it's actually like to drive like a GTI. All right, that's fueled. Now I have to do my start sequence in this car and start with a bad. Um, right, so, lane keep assist. That. Every damn time I get in it. I hate that. I mean, my up had that, but it was a button on the dashboard. This, I have to go through menus, and they're not just any old menus, they're through this touch. Haptic feedback steering wheel. I'll sound like a broken record here, but I have no idea why they thought this was a good idea. 
um, and most of the motor impress hate it as well. However, I will say after living with it for a week, it's not as bad as I've remembered using it before. Maybe I'm just getting used to it, but it's still completely useless. In my eyes, having real buttons always feels more premium. It feels cheaper than my missus one in here because of the lack of buttons and just having to look to find where to press things for your climate control. I mean, come on. Come on. Sort it out. So yeah, on a better road now, I'll stick it into sport mode. That puts the gearbox in sport, stiffens the suspension up, throttle response goes up quite significantly as well, but probably should have it in manual if I'm going to be sporty, shouldn't I? And flick the paddles, which give me zero fun compared to a manual, but... Now, one thing that surprised me is this got, this has got, uh, <coughs> Michelin Primacy, Primacy, Primacy's on, Primacy, prim I don't know, I can't remember what they're called, but not a big fan of these tyres, I find them very unpredictable when their breakaway can be quite severe and quick, sort of, they just fall off a cliff when you, when you start pushing them a bit, um, so yeah, you find yourself troubling the tyres a little bit, wow, this guy's going slow. has the power to overtake people doing 30 in a 60, which is very good. Yeah, as I say, these paddles don't really give me much enjoyment, I have to say, even in manual mode. I like having it in manual uh, so I can change the gears. If you go too far in the rev range, it changes up for you anyway. Um, and if you don't press the paddles for a while, it goes back into auto like it did there. To be honest with you, you're probably better off just leaving it in auto no matter what mode you're doing. Um, but it does give you something, some sort of feedback and excitement to flick paddles around, doesn't it? And as I say, no manual option, and I just oh, I think it's such a crying shame because I know there's a potential in this car to be so much more fun about the manual in it. It'd be such a such more exciting prospect to me. That's not to say it's a bad car, not at all. It's just personal preference. I prefer to have an knob to play with rather than flaps. Yeah, damping's not too bad actually, I have to say. It doesn't, um, doesn't crash too hard. It's the same MQB platform as my Golf, so no surprise there really. Steering wheel feedback is all right. I think that if you had some better tyres on it, it would be very good actually. Um, I've had these tyres in different cars and even some really good cars. It makes them feel a bit skittish and you'd lose a bit of confidence. It makes quite a nice noise. A bit more pumped in under sports mode as well. Yes, I genuinely think I can travel down a lot of these roads quicker than the Fiesta ST. Partly because it's the DSG, but yeah, it's got that bit more power and it just feels a bit more composed. That's not always a good thing in a little hot hatch like this. You kind of want it to be a bit loose and a bit more fun, but... Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I've had this for a week, and at first I thought, wow, this is dull. <laughs> Genuinely, my first thought was, why is this car so boring to drive? It shouldn't be. You know, all the ingredients are there. We've got the 2-litre TFSI, we've got the snappy gearbox, it's a small car, small footprint car, you know, it's, it, everything's here to make me want it. I love Golf GTI, so why, for the first few days, was I a bit, oh, this is terrible, well, not terrible, but you know what I mean, I was disappointed, my first impressions, but now, now I've had the chance to kick its head in a little bit. There is a fun car under here. You do have to scratch a bit harder to find it. But it is here. And there's no doubt about it, it is a quick car. I think it's because it is so sensible most of the time you're using it, that you just don't think it has it in it to give you some enjoyment. But 
here it is. <laughs> now, <laughs> see, it's putting a smile on my face. I can't deny it, it's not boring. I was wrong to say it was boring the first time, the first few days I drove it. It's got potential on the right road. Yeah, throw it in manual, flick the paddles around. It's a bit fast there. Let's try this compression again. This, this is a bit of a... Yeah, started to get unsettled through there, but you're not gonna be doing those speeds a lot, let's be honest. <laughs> Auto. Yeah, interesting one actually. I've, I've, I've taken out for a few blasts, but I think that was probably the best one I had in it. Probably because I'm getting a bit more used to the car and all that sort of jazz, but yeah. So, yeah, it's difficult to summarise this one really. I'd love to come and do a summary outside of the car, but it's uh, getting quite dark as you can see, and I need to get home for my other half goes back tomorrow and I will miss it a bit actually uh, obviously it's difficult to say I would buy one we've got the normal polo we've got my Golf GTI so we've got a good mix in the driveway either or really um, I know for a fact that this was an option to upgrade to trade in my fiance's one but she is happy with the car she's got now and after going out on this she wasn't that bothered with the extra power and things like that she wasn't a fan of the touch controls so i think we're going to keep hers for a bit longer when i picked this up or when this was dropped off i should say sorry i posted it on a few facebook pages i'm a member of twitter and things like that but basically volkswagen people i said what do you want to know about it the number one question was kind of what is it who's it for i don't understand why it exists and Okay, that's a fair comment, but you have to remember that the GTI badge is probably one of the most valuable in Volkswagen's arsenal. In fact, it's probably one of the most valuable badges in, in cars. I don't mean like the overall badge, like Volkswagen, Toyota, Ferrari, all that. I mean, you know, within it. Um, they've got this GTI badge, this particular one, and all the heritage and you know, that they can play on with the tartan seats, the bloody merchandise, the, you know, anything. I think another reason people are skeptical is, let's say Volkswagen haven't always been good to the GTI brand that is so valuable to them. Or well, maybe they just didn't realize its value. Mar 4 Golf is always held up as one of these things where it's like, oh my God, it's the worst thing ever. Well, the 1.8 turbo GTI was actually not that bad at all. Uh, and the Mar 4 Golf itself is probably, even now, such a good car, that you'd forgive it for a lot, but they did give us another GTI that was just two liter eight valve and 115 horsepower, and it was really crap, really. That engine was old anyway, and not that economical, definitely not that fast, in fact, as is often quoted, there's diesels quicker, there were better diesels as well. There were better petrols, I mean, the 1.6 petrol was only 15 brake horsepower down, and it could easily keep up, probably. Um, so yeah, maybe some people think they're a bit cynical. They think maybe they just plonked a GTI badge on a high-spec polo and gone, there you go. If you're as big of a nerd as me, you'll remember that they used to do that. But they used to call it the driver. Mark 1 and Mark 2 Golf. And I think the Mark 3 as well. Yeah, the Mark 3 you could get a driver. It essentially had all the GTI kit, but no badges, and it just said driver, and it was usually a smaller engine. There you go, nerd fact. Well, no, it is a real GTI. The fact that it has that two litre engine, the suspension upgrades, all the other stuff um, that goes with it, it is definitely a proper GTI. And it drives like a GTI, which is not a bad thing. I just wish, wish it had the manual. I know I'm, I'm, I'm old school, I'm going on like a broken record, but this little car, with the power of the bigger car and a manual box, I think I'd struggle to justify buying the Golf over it. Maybe that's why Volkswagen have done this. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh there. And I know 31 grand for a Polo is... What? 31 grand for a Polo? I mean, it is with options, come on. But, having said that, there are a lot of people who are a bit snobby about the Polo badge. I've been told this is a girl's car. 
and I have been told, ugh, polo, ugh. Well, it's basically the size of a golf. It's built like a golf. It looks fantastic. Oh, I don't see the problem with buying a polo myself. But should you, should you buy a polo? Well, kind of depends on what you're in the market for. Ford have done Volkswagen a lot of favours by killing off the Fiesta. So your only option, something around this size that is more fun to drive, is the Puma ST. But that's 36,000 as I tested it. And I think it starts in the 30s as well. So, hmm. also I've noticed online, much like the Ford uh, Puma at the moment, this car can be found with discounts at dealers, uh, you know, pre-registered or demo cars, even offers off of ordering new ones. So there's definitely deals to be had, we'll say that. Uh, you could look at the i20N, that's a manual car, it's more like the Fiesta ST. Again, really, really good car. Much, much cheaper feeling inside, uh, but it is cheaper to buy. So there is that. And then if you wanted a premium five-door automatic sporty car, you're kind of maybe looking at the 128Ti BMW uh, or its other cousin car, same chassis, engine, etc. is, like I said, the uh, Cooper S uh, with only 180 horsepower, just a bit near. It is cheaper for the base level of that, though. You have more options with the Cooper S compared to this in terms of, you know, the GTI is just the GTI, but you can buy a Cooper S at about four different trim levels. It's very confusing. Uh, but that is an option. It is an option. Uh, I think that is actually an auto, though, and not a paddle shifty thing. I mean, you can shift it, I'm sure, but it's, it, it's basically an automatic gearbox, whereas this is a double clutch thing. So, yeah, it's a difficult one. Like I say, I think Volkswagen have been helped a little bit by the market opening up. But yeah, pros of this car, very good premium feel. On long distance journeys, it does not feel like a small car at all. It feels really, really refined. Low road noise, very nice to drive. The radar cruise is excellent as it always has been in Volkswagen. They just get it right with that radar thing. DSG gearbox is super smooth pretty much all the time. I do find them to be a bit indecisive around town sometimes and pulling away from junctions, but this one today is actually working really well. It's obviously a pricier car than some of its alternatives, but I would argue you do feel the premium feel inside here for that extra cash. And my main gripe with it doesn't feel quite like the driver's car I would like it to. That's ironic coming from me, somebody who's been a habitual buyer of Gold GTIs, but they have been good. You know, the same problem that the Golf GTI has, in a way, uh, are people who will always compare it to its peers, brand new, but uh, to be honest with you, having driven a lot of the peers back to back, yes, XYZ is better to drive fast on a track or on a bumpy road. However, the difference is that minimal, and when you're actually spending your own cash on some of these cars, you probably want the Volkswagen for its residual values, its quality, just overall better in this. Um, and I think the Polo is the same. Ford seem to appreciate like a stone compared to these. Uh, no idea about the Hyundai residuals. Actually, when I looked at some of the N models, they were quite good. So maybe the i20N is not bad. Don't know, but as I say, much more premium inside this car. So yeah, I hope that sort of convoluted quick evening review was okay for you guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this car. Uh, it's certainly an interesting prospect and uh, personally I, would, I wouldn't I would poo-poo it for being a polo or for its price tag until you've had a sit in one and maybe had a driver one as well. As ever, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry for the lack of uploads at the moment. I'm a very busy boy. Um, my day job is in F1, so I am, you know, 12 hour days. I come home and I might get a chance to film one of these and go to bed. So I really do appreciate you guys that do keep watching me. Um, please like, subscribe, etc. And finally, thanks to Volkswagen for lending me the car and uh, thanks to GT Spirit for uh, uh, 
let me write words about the car on their website. So yeah, I'll link that below when it's live. But for now, thank you very much and uh, see you next time.